What's up everybody? So we're back on the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we are going to be taking this little piece of bar stock right here, a little 5 8 round that we forged from a coil spring and we are going to make it into a little hidden tang knife. Now in this episode we're primarily going to be focused on the forging of the blade because I want to break down my forging steps and actually tell you all the thought process behind using what hammers and how I'm forging. So we're going to do that in this episode and I don't know how long the episode is going to be because typically I time lapse through the actual forging process and I might do some time lapses in this but when it comes down to going into the forging and maybe ending the forging part of that I will be talking and I'll try and break down some of the steps so that y'all can kind of understand why I'm doing what I'm doing with the hammers and why I'm using specific hammers to achieve a certain goal. So we're going to do that in this episode, but before we hop into it, I want to tell you all this episode is brought to you by Two Bastards Forge. It's actually my hat and the shirt. These people, Two Bastards Forge, they're the ones that sent me this beautiful hammer right here. So that is an awesome straight peen hammer. I've wanted one of these for a while. I made my own and it does not look like this. This is absolutely beautiful. I like how they blued this area right here where their mark is. But that is just absolutely gorgeous. It is super polished, super rounded. And I actually like how broad this is right here. So this is perfect for what I need this for. It moves the steel exactly how I want it to. But so this one, I really like this one, but this has kind of a more of a point to it. And this is a little more rounded. Really like that. Now, of course, I really like this one too, but we'll talk about that later. But this right here for whenever I'm getting in and I'm doing my integral bolsters or if I'm doing the finger choil or any of that stuff, this right here is the perfect radius for that. And they did an amazing job on this hammer. It works amazingly. So you're going to get to see that in this video. And I really want to thank them for sending this to me. I was expecting to pay for this hammer. I ordered this hammer with the intent to purchase it from them. And they went ahead and sent it to me for free for me to try out. So I really appreciate when people do stuff like that because again, this was one that I ordered. They didn't just go, hey Eric, we want to send you a hammer. I ordered this hammer with the intent to pay for it. And yeah, really enjoy that. These guys, absolutely awesome. And, uh, and thank y'all for, for sending this to me. But let's get into it. Let's get some forging done, see what we can do. So a little disclaimer here, this again is just my process of doing this. Is it the exact process? Nope, but it's mine. So I'm gonna start off by flattening two sides a little bit. So we're just gonna be flattening those two sides and then we're gonna end up using our cross peen to stretch them out. By flattening those sides, it makes it a little bit easier to be able to, for one, know where you're planning on forging. Two, it keeps that, that bar flat, so whenever you're hitting it, it's not wanting to bounce everywhere. It's got a nice flat spot on the other side. You forge, flip it over, forge. You'll see that in this next clip. So now we got our little flat area. We want to start hitting in that area with this cross peen. And what that's going to do 
is that's going to expand. It's going to expand the steel out this way, so that we can then have our actual blade width. So we're going to be forging it down and wide, and then we'll stretch it out this way. So forge it out and then stretch it out. That's the goal there. And remember, you want to hit each side evenly, especially if you're trying to do an integral. You don't want to just forge down on one side because it's going to make it to where the blade isn't centered in that bolster area. So let's go ahead and get it more. Okay, so now we're going to switch to our straight peen and we're going to pull the blade out a little bit and we're actually going to start creating a little bit of that integral bolster area. See now, one of the things that I like about this particular hammer right here, rather than the one that I made, this is effective. You know, it's got a straight peen and a cross peen on it. But when I'm using this one, I have to switch in between hammers. This one, I'm gonna be able to do all that stretching out and it still has the flat side of a rounding hammer on it. So when I start forging in the tip, all I gotta do is just use this hammer to stretch, and flatten and plus I can use this to forge in the tip and I'm not having to switch between a bunch of hammers so I'm really excited about that that's the reason why I wanted this specific hammer right here because now I can come in here and I can start forging in the tip amount of time that you have to worry about switching hammers the better you know, typically I'd be using these two this to stretch and do all that this to forge in the tip and I'd be switching between hammers this is gonna keep me from having to do that for you know goals like this to make it a little bit easier on me And I'm bringing it over to the edge so that I can hammer on it and pinch it without risking hitting my anvil a ton. Now that we got that tip forged in there, we're not really super defining it right now, but we're going to go ahead and stretch it just a little bit more. something I want to explain to y'all my lighting in the shop makes this look color, colder than it is because of the way it reflects off of it but if I turn the lights off right now that would still be red so I know some of y'all kind of think he's just sitting there hammering on cold steel no it's still hot okay so now we're gonna hang it off the edge take the blade off the edge and forge on the spine and drop that blade down That way it's even with the bolster area. And then we're gonna end up forging it out a little bit more. And it drops that heel down. So now I'm gonna stretch this out just a little bit. Going from both sides. So I left the heel pretty thick so that I could do this next step right here. Okay, 
And what that just did was brought my heel down about another quarter of an inch right there while forging in the bevels a little bit. And instead of hitting it with the flat side of a hammer, that's gonna move the material kind of everywhere. I wanted to pull that heel down just like that. So then we'll come back in and we'll flatten that out and forge in our bevels. One thing that I'm gonna do before I do that is on this next heat, I'm gonna come through here and I'm gonna hit the spine again with this on the edge and drop that down just a hair more because you can see it kind of flared up right here. We need to pull that back down. Just like that. And then we can flatten come to this side where the actual piece is round, where the edge is rounder. Okay, then on the next heat, we'll finish out that tip a little bit, and then we'll forge in our bevels the rest of the way. So I decided on making it a little clip point, so I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. And all I'm doing was I was taking that huge belly out of it. So now we're gonna take this little rounded part of the edge of the anvil and my rounding hammer. They actually match right there and we're going to clean up our bolster area. We don't have to get too crazy right here. I just wanna kinda of clean it up, even it out, without forcing everything to be super off. What I mean by that is the blade being centered in the bolster area. We want that to be our number one goal. And while still smoothing this area. Check for straightness. Make sure everything's even. So on this next step, we're gonna pull the tang back a little bit and we're gonna flatten out the bolster just a hair. Just because I don't want it as round as it is right now, I'm gonna make it more of an oval. And if you're wondering, no, I'm not done with the blade section yet. I'll be straightening a few things after we get some stuff out of whack here. Let's go ahead and stretch that tang out with our straight peen. Don't really need a super long tang and once I come in and forge it down this way, it's going to stretch it out quite a bit. But you can see we're trying to isolate this area here and keep it where it is so that we're not really moving a bunch. And then I'll go in and I'll straighten that blade a little bit after I get done screwing with this. And now we're gonna use our straight peen to kind of taper this out. So now we're just going to work on smoothing things out. That's enough tang for us. We got plenty. 
we'll end up removing all that by stock removal and getting it down to where we want it. But now we want to clean up the bolster. Now we're going to flip it around, we're going to get that blade nice and good. And at this point, we're just going to be smoothing and straightening and evening everything up. Starting this little bolster area. We'll heat it one more time and we'll work on smoothing out that blade. So when it comes to smoothing, I use my little planishing hammer. This is an auto body hammer that I got about 22 years ago. Now I just need to straighten the tang a little bit, pull it over, we're going to heat it up, put it in the vise, and do it that way. Alright, just put the tang in the old Harbor Freight vise. Let me grab these guys, and we crank it over. Where it's nice and straight. We're using it, we're moving it with the bolster, not the blade. So we're not making the blade crooked. And we're just going to straighten the tang to where it actually is even with the blade, like that. So that whenever I do my stock removal on that tang, I'm not having to mess with it a bunch. Now, we're nice and straight going throughout there. So now that we've done all of our forging process, we need to go ahead and anneal it. I do the annealing step after the forging process on every single one of my knives, just to kind of bring it all the way up to 1600, get that steel nice and even, kind of take a lot of that abuse that we just put into it out of it with heating and cooling, heating and cooling, heating and cooling, forging, hitting it, all that stuff. We're gonna anneal it, make that steel nice and soft so that we can drill through it so that it's easy on our abrasives, all of that. But I do this after every forging process just to make my life a little bit easier. So now we're gonna go ahead, cut this off, close it off. and let it cool down, like I said, nice and slow with the forge.
All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap this Shop Talk Tuesday up here. Now, we were able to get this knife out of half of one of these. So these are what I've been using to forge these knives. I've used about that much steel right there to make this, which is pretty cool. Now, when it comes down to it, this is going to be my first integral bolster knife. So in next week's Shop Talk Tuesday, we're going to focus on the handle. I've got a really beautiful piece of wood that's going to go on here. I might do a little spacer, don't know just yet. This is going to be my first time fitting a handle to an integral bolster knife. So that should be a fun little process. And on top of that, I think this turned out really nice. I think the area, the Ricasso going up into that bolster looks really good. I think it looks cool having that forged texture. I'm going to leave the sides like this and the top round part with the forged texture. I did smooth this area off just so that it's really comfortable for the hand. I think that turned out real nice. Got our bevels forged in. Now, whenever I do grind the bevels into this, I am going to bring them up a little bit higher so that you have some nice clean bevels. I like a clip point with nice clean bevels going into the Ricasso and the flats being that brute to forge texture. I think it makes a nice cool transition. So one, one of the things I haven't decided yet is whether I want to do a, like an actual like swedge, whether I want to grind in that bevel to the top there. So y'all let me know. Do y'all think I should do that or do you think I should just grind them in and leave that flat? I'll leave that one up to y'all. But I think it turned out real nice. I think the bolsters look good. And this was the first time having me fully explain the forging process to get a blade from a piece of round bar to something like this. Hopefully y'all liked it. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below if you think it's a cool profile and then it's gonna turn out real cool. Let me know that as well. Guys, that's the end of this video. If you would, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there and I'll catch y'all next time.